you've watched another video or just welcome really if you haven't there you go pretty simple i've been told off because i'm not self-marketing and i'm not very good at all this self-promotional stuff but i've been told i've got to do this so if you need your border fixed or repaired or you want it serviced or you want it maintained properly say properly um obviously we work in three quarters of the area of london north east south east a little bit of southwest Essex, Northwest Kent, North Kent, and a bit of Surrey. So if you need your border looked at or you want something to look after it properly, by all means, give us a call. Right, that's the embarrassing bit done. Let's crack on with what I'm here for. F76 fault code. Now, this is not a common fault, but if you see F76 come up on your boiler, then you need to be worried because effectively the F76 fault code is usually the kiss of death. To the Valent Ecotech boiler. It's a bit of a one-way street but before I go any further let me explain to you why it's the kiss of death and then you'll probably have a better understanding of what I mean. Now I was making this this morning this is a main heat exchanger out of an Ecotech boiler and uh, I was doing the doing this for a completely different reason other than this video but then i thought while i was doing this it suddenly dawned on me actually this is worth doing a video on just in case now the main heat exchanger is the heart and soul of your boiler it is literally the the boiler itself it is the most expensive component in the whole appliance depending on the size of the boiler that you've got so say an 824 boiler like this one behind me the main heat exchanger Somewhere, I don't know, 400 quid, 450 quid maybe, maybe a bit more, I don't know. I can't remember the last time I bought one, to be honest. But a 37 kilowatt boiler, the prices go up ridiculously expensive, like 600, 650 pounds, maybe 700, I'm not sure nowadays. But it is an incredibly expensive part to replace if you have to replace it. Usually, if you get an F76 fault code, the boiler's are right off, it's just give it its last rights and buy a new boiler. But let me explain to you why and why you get the S76 fault code before you bite the bullet. Modern appliances like this are made of stuff like plastic. Yeah, plastic. Lots of plastic. What happened to uh, the carbon footprint and all that old game. I'm not quite sure about that. But there's a lot of plastic in these things. This is the main heat exchanger. It's a series of coils that water is pumped round. And then in the front of the burn, in front of the heat exchanger here, which is this thing here, you have the gas burner. And that pumps gas in and burns the gas. So the temperatures in there are extremely high. The gas flue gas is then passed through the outside of the chassis or the, the, the shroud pass through the back of here through the, and out through the top here and goes off outside so that's basically how it works but as i said they do get very hot now there are a lot of controls on this boiler so theoretically it should never reach excessive temperatures but under certain circumstances they can now this little gadget here is what we would call an overheat stack, thermal fuse, thermal link, but basically it's a safety cutout for higher temperature. And that is positioned in the plastic shroud. So that is monitoring the temperature between the coils and the plastic shroud and the gap in between where the flue gases are zipping around before they disappear. Now, if your main heat exchanger reaches an excessively high temperature, this thermal fuse or thermal link will trip and it's a one way street. It will not reset. It won't go back. It's cut off. It will kill your boiler dead and you will not be able to use the boiler. F76 finished. You cannot reset. You can't reuse the boiler. It's finished. And the reason for that is because we're using that lovely stuff called plastic that's filling up the Pacific Ocean. If that gets to an excessively high temperature, 
Basically, it compromises the integrity of the plastic shroud. So in other words, it could have distorted, it could have cracked, it could have melted. But basically, it's probably damaged. Probably. Not guaranteed, but it, there's a good chance it might be damaged in some way, which will make it unsafe to use. Because if there's any breakdown in the integrity of this plastic shroud, it means that the flue gases and the temperature and heat from inside of here can get out of here into the outside of your borer and possibly catch the borer on fire. Not a good idea. So, once that's tripped, that's it. Because as far as the border is concerned, the integrity of that plastic shroud is now called into doubt. And it's not going to take any chances. So it will shut your border off and it will not come back on. And the reason that you can't buy these, it's not even got a part number. You cannot buy these. Not available. The only way you can get one of these is if it's buy a brand new heat exchanger because it comes with a new heat exchanger. Now obviously, if you take old boilers out, and there's nothing wrong with them, you can nick these out of the old boilers, which is what I do, and I always keep two or three of these on a van because they're very good for fault diagnosing to get you out of trouble. You can find out what's going on if you've got a spare one. But apart from that, you can't ever reuse one. So you'd have to replace the whole heat exchanger. Then you're caught between a hard, rock and a hard place because then do you want to spend six, seven, eight hundred pounds rebuilding the boiler with a new heat exchanger? Or do you just buy the bullet and buy a new boiler? Bit of a conundrum. So if you find an F76 fault code on your boiler, you're probably going to have to either bite the bullet and buy a new boiler or take a gamble and spend an awful lot of money on a boiler that's only going to probably last 10 or 12 years at most anyway. So if your boiler's already a few years old, do you really want to be spending that sort of money on something that you're going to have to replace probably in a few years time anyway? It's a very, very difficult place to be. Now then, what causes the F76 fault code? What causes this to overheat? Because I said at the beginning of the video, there are a lot of controls on this boiler, so it's quite unusual for it to get to that temperature in the first place, to trip the overheat or thermal link, because there's so many other controls on the boiler to prevent that happening anyway, before it gets that far. What I'm gonna tell you. Because of the nature of how this works, and you probably can't see it, but I'll turn it around anyway. This is a series of coils set up on a manifold. So you've got one, two, three, four, five. Five coils on there coming out on the flow and return. And that is an open flow manifold. Which means the first three coils here are generally used for heating the water. The rear coils at the back, or close to the back, probably the back two, are used to cool down or retrieve the latent heat of evaporation in the flue gases before the flue gases leave through the back chamber here and out through the flue. So basically that's how the heat exchanger works. So you've got lots of coils going around it in a manifold. Now, if you get air trapped in those coils, the boiler will thump and bang and pop. And before the other controls really find out or work out what's going on, before you know what's happened, bang, the overheat or thermal link has tripped because it's got too hot, because you've got air trapped in those coils or in the heat exchanger. Now, this has been thought of because on the bore itself, in here, and on the original Ecotec, there are certain test programs built into the boiler that you can use. And now the test program that you require when you refill the boiler or you've got air in the boiler is the p 0 test program and that is specifically designed to run the boiler and the pump to clear the air out of the heat exchanger and the boiler before it comes on now then this is a scenario that happens all the time you you get your local or your gas safe registered plumber or british gas or home serve whatever it is whoever it is you use for all your plumbing and heating work <coughs> excuse me and you say to my old, can you put, uh, I want to change a radiator in my front bedroom and I want to change a radiator in my lounge. 
So they come along, they drain the system down, they put two new radiators in, they fill the system back up and they turn the boiler back on. And then within about three minutes, bang, boiler's popped and banged and the thermal leak's blown on your heat exchanger. So you've just written off a boiler. That's because they haven't used the test, the P0 test program before they switch the boiler on. And it quite clearly states in all the manufacturer's instructions going right away back to 2005, six, when the boiler first came out, that whenever you work on the water side of this boiler, you must carry out a P0 test program before commissioning the boiler into like burning up or coming on and burning gas. And that, that, sorry, not that, that, that is the reason why. So every time you have your boiler serviced, to service the boiler, you've got to drain it because you've got to check the vessel, etc., etc., and you have to fill the boiler back up again. Before you turn the boiler back on, you have to carry out a P0 test program. And if you don't, you run the risk of popping that and then turning around to the customer and saying, I'm very sorry, I've just blown your boiler up. And then you've got to try and explain as to why the boiler's now completely knackered when all you was doing was servicing it or moving a radiator because you haven't P0'd it. Not good. So, this video then, in conclusion, P F76, kiss of death. If that's gone, you're really stuck between a rock and an old place as to what you're going to do about it. Second thing, always, always, always P0 the boiler before you fire it up. If you've done any work on the water side of the boiler, radiators, heating circuit, servicing the boiler, charging the expansion vessel, whatever. Even if you change the pump or divert it up, doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. If you drain that boiler, if you fill it back up again, you have to P0 before you turn the boiler back on into operation. So there you go, F76. And if you're really watching this video and you've got F76 or you've had F6, F6, F76, I genuinely, my heart goes out to you because it's heartbreaking, but it is what it is.